Thank you, Tom, and uh, welcome everybody. This is a really strange times, isn't it, doing a talk um, when there's no faces the other side, particularly when we're in a career where we are people people. Um, so welcome. My name is Liz Bannister and I am the admissions tutor for the um, dental hygiene and therapy programme here at the University of Birmingham. Going to take you through, she says, um, a few sort of bits and pieces about the course, about what you might expect to study, about the career and the application process and a few other things that hopefully you'll find useful and valuable and I do appreciate um, you joining us today. This is the dental hospital. Unfortunately, can't have a look around that today. There are links to a virtual tour which a couple of the undergraduate dental students have um, prepared and delivered that are available on the university website so do go and source that if you want to have a look inside the building. I've put a couple of photos into um, the, the presentation so you can get an idea but it is a, a brand new building really we've only been in there a few years and it is purpose-built and it has the advantage of having that air climate that is really useful um, in, in current conditions. This is the front entrance of the building. So um, again, it's um, really close to campus actually. We can see the clock tower at the center of campus. So it is walkable and it is good for sort of access to student accommodation um, right in the, the heart of things almost just, just down the road. In terms of the inside building, this um, sort of gives you an indication of how light and airy it is and um, this, the way the clinics are, are designed to be able to be used and facilitate your learning. Let's talk about entrance requirements then. It's one of the things that um, you tend to look at and when you're thinking about what career shall I, shall I do, you look at, well, what do my qualifications what do they fit but also don't forget with dental hygiene and therapy it's not just about the course it's about the career and the longevity of the career six GCSE passes at grade C or four or above and these must include English maths and um, biology or dual awards science then on top of that you need three A levels at grades A B B or above one of these A levels must be biology. Um, we don't specify whether the biology is the A grade or the B grade. It just needs to be included just because of the content um, within the curriculum. You can also apply with an access to higher education in health or science subjects. Really important that biology, again, is in this um, with at least uh, 15 credits of the biology. You study 60 credits um, at the access, 45 of this need to be at level three. And if you're applying with your GCSEs, you would need 30 at distinction and 15 at merit. Again, we don't specify that the biology has to be distinction, for example. Other entrance requirements, if those of you that are, are, are listening in and watching in um, are either about to be qualified as a dental nurse or doing dental nursing or have been working with dental nursing for, for some time, then there are the, the two routes as well for, for the dental nursing. As with everything, you still need the six GCSEs at grade C or above. Um, but with the dental nursing, if you're doing it alongside A-levels, you just need the two A-levels at grades B and B or higher one of those must be biology. You can also apply with your dental nursing and the access course, as discussed before, uh, with those, uh, at least those 15 credits at level three of biology. Now the 30 can be a distinction or merit in this, so just a slight differential on the sort of level of, of the access. If you already hold a degree, then you would need to have attained um, at least a 2-1 or higher. It can be in any subject. Prior to that, you would have needed to have done A-levels or access uh, and gained um, the A-levels at grade C or above. We still need that biology content in there. If your school, college or your route of education has been the International Baccalaureate, then it's 32 points. Um, biology must be included. I'm getting a bit repetitive with the biology, I do 
realise that. Um, and we say preferably chemistry. The level of chemistry within the course is about being able to balance an equation and the importance of knowing about the dental materials that you're going to be doing fillings, restorations with, is where the chemistry really comes into its own. The application process is via UCAS, the UCAS website address, as in UCAS.com. For hygiene and therapy, the applications close in January of the year of entry. So at the moment, we're talking about 2021 entry. So the closing date will be the 15th of January 2021. We do interview. Um, our normal interview process is multiple mini interviews at the moment. They may well be virtual. Uh, we, are, we are still working on how we're going to do the interviews. We take 28 students a year, that is our sort of allocation. And what you need to be able to know and understand is the role of the dental hygienist and the dental therapist within the, the dental team. A lot of that has previously been gained through work observation. I just wanted to reassure everybody who is thinking of applying for next year that we are very um, sympathetic, empathic to the fact that work observation may well not have been possible for you if you hadn't been able to gain it um, earlier on in your sort of planning and what you were going to do. So what I would advise you to do, you're not going to be treated any differently in terms of you are still going to be considered even if you haven't managed to get that work experience, but you need to find out as much as you can about the career, talk to as many people, go on as many websites, do as many virtual tours as you can, so you get that insight into what the actual career is. Because it's, again, uh, it's not about how you're going to study for three years. It's how you're going to work for, for your career and the situations that you're going to be in. So, yes, face-to-face -face experiences might not have been possible, but conversations could be had, websites can have been looked into. So do try and find out as, as, much, as, uh, as much as you can. What you may be considering applying for is not just where you're going to spend the three years and Birmingham is a wonderful place to spend those three years and often many of our graduates who weren't from Birmingham do stay in the area because they do um, in, enjoy it and meet um, a lot of people and a lot of contacts to be able to work but this career is also about being a professional and it very much runs through the entire course and through um, your, your whole life in this career so as well as the entry requirements in terms of the academics, which are um, one factor, it's all about you as a, a person and about um, how you feel and your morals and your ethics. So you have to sign up to what we call fitness to practice. And that looks at your code of conduct and how you interact with people. You would have to complete a health declaration um, as part of the in so admissions process if you like after after your interviews and uh, a declaration from the disclosure and barring uh, service which would enable you to be able to work with the wide range of people that you work with during this course you will be treating patients you'll be treating children you'll be treating adults so that's so the full range so you have to be um, prepared and, and ready to do that so going on from that, um, I sort of mentioned that it isn't all about academics, very, very much so. Academics you need because you need to be able to cope with the course and the demands on the course. But what we also need to consider, sorry, is the skills and personal qualities. So I've just outlined a few things that you may be thinking, oh yeah, that, that fits me, or yeah, that's why I am drawn to dentistry as a, as a career. So manual dexterity skills to within a millimeter of precision that's how much sort of close work that you're doing it, it's artistry it's about that attention to detail and wanting to recreate and restore um, people's dentition their, their teeth to their their healthy status so in terms of that it's really important that you enjoy working with your hands Communication, huge, huge. You are in a situation, you are 
in control of a patient in terms of you are managing them, you're treating them, you're helping them, you're motivating them, you're encouraging them to, to make changes uh, in their lifestyle. And a lot of communication is about listening. And also having that maturity to realize that you need to listen, but you also need to control situations to be able to manage your patients and recommend what is appropriate for them. Other skills and personal qualities are about that treating everybody the same, but as an individual. It's, it's a bit contradictory really, isn't it? It's all talking about every patient is the same, but they're not. Every single person is an individual. And you may need those empathic skills and really do need a high level of professionalism in terms of your ethics and how you go about sort of your business and, and your work and your lifestyle. Next few slides talk a little bit about the curriculum. Um, it's a three year course, it is full time and it is very, very much full time. So um, potentially nine to five, but those um, hours may, may vary, there may be different sort of almost shift patterns um, involved, but it's hands on from the outset and you learn by yes the theory is is there um but you also learn by putting that theory together with clinical practice and you will actually start treating patients during your first year um, of, of studying with us it's it's really important to to realize that every part of our curriculum is is there for a reason there are there are no sort of bits that are put in just to fill a gap because um, we need to take stuff away rather than fill gaps. Um, so it's all about everything that you need to be a successful dental hygienist and therapist. And at the end of the three years, then you would be able to register on the General Dental Council's den Dental Care Professionals Register to work as a dental hygienist and a dental therapist. So all the modules are compulsory. Phantom Head teaching will start uh, usually within the first month and our first um, assessment period is at the, the end of January, beginning of February, and you start having your sort of first assessments, um, aiming to start treating patients in the dental hospital um, from, from the summer term, from, from after the uh, sort of summer exam period in May, June time. Some of the um, modules, I'm going to outline a little bit about some of the first year modules because they're the ones that are, are happening sooner uh, in terms of um, where you're at in your application process. Biomedical Sciences is a module that carries on from your biology knowledge and it'll be very important that you bring that existing knowledge with you um, as there will be a, a certain amount of self-directed learning and expectation that you will be able to understand and have a grasp of that um, anatomy. That's mainly general anatomy. What this module will do will take you into more detail with regards to the anatomy of the oral cavity and the nerve and blood vessels in there and also the, the study of the, the, your teeth and everything. If you hear some weird noises in my background right now, my dogs are just about to go out for a walk, so they might get a little bit excited and we have a wooden floor. So I, I do apologize if you hear some weird tapping noises. Also, because it is about people, um, there's a modest, a, mod a modestry, a module that looks at dentistry and society and all the health promotion and about the communication about that, about the reasons behind different dental diseases. In simple terms, I'll just sort of take you back a little step. Dental hygienist is um, basically the treatment of gum disease, uh, gingival disease, periodontal disease. Dental therapist is basically the treatment of cavities, holes in teeth. Um, caries. So they are two of the most prevalent diseases um, in, in the sort of public. So a lot of the background behind this and how fluoride um, affects and improves health is all covered in this module. 
You'll also start what we call the um, adult restorative dentistry. So again, that's the, the therapy side of the role. Sometimes I think when people start initially looking into dental hygiene and therapy, they think therapy means just talking to people. A dental therapist is a clinician who undertakes fillings on adults and children. It's not just about treating children, it's about doing adult fillings as well. So there's a, a lot of understanding of the dental materials which is where your chemistry comes in as I mentioned earlier to be able to to think about and how we're going to treat um, patients. The picture that is there is the clinical skills lab in the dental hospital so um, that's where a lot of this training takes place in terms of learning on phantom heads. Professionalism. I've mentioned professionalism um, in sort of the preparation, really, of coming into the, the career. Um, learning about law and ethics in this module, thinking about what the General Dental Council uh, requirements are, what those standards are that we have to adhere to, about our duty of candour, about our honesty, about our integrity. Um, professionalism is also about reflective practice and you've possibly heard those terms if you've been looking into careers such as dentistry and dental hygiene and therapy that reflective practice is not just as a student but throughout your lifetime in this career and it's a really important skill that we help you to build up during your your time with us during the three years in the second year, you go on to carry on treating patients with the, the diseases, the, the, the periodontal gum diseases and the uh, dental caries and the prevention of those. Start thinking about children's dentistry and how to treat ch children and the, the difference of that. Start taking radiographs, dental radiographs, both extraoral, that's outside the mouth, and intraoral. Um, radiography and you continue to do sort of professionalism portfolio work in terms of reflective practice and information governance. In the final year, in the third year, you undertake a research project. It's a research project in terms of more of a critical appraisal of a and of looking at papers that are answering a, a question or a theory. Um, and you would do this alongside all your clinical work and all your still academic theory and practice in there. You will go to outreach clinics in the third year, end of second year um, into third year. We do organise those for you. So you do not have to look for any placements. They are all timetabled um, for you. It involves only being out one day a week and it's within the West Midlands. So it's, they're easy, accessible to via public transport or, or however. Um, you choose to to get there. Extremely high contact hours with dental hygiene and therapy and um, long terms. So in terms of a university course, you would be having in excess of 20 hours of contact with us um, a week. You would be looking at two weeks off at Christmas, one or two weeks off at Easter, four or five weeks in the summer. So very much like school terms, if you like. So it is a uh, 40 week a year sort of course, um, not like some other university programmes that you may have uh, seen or, or been considering. What I can say about the University of Birmingham, and there'll, there'll be loads of places that you can go and have a look at today if you're, you're looking around, is the support is excellent. Um, the amount of societies, the well-being support, everything that's there is uh, wonderful, it's available and very well led. Within the team itself in the School of Hygiene and Therapy, as we say, we have 28 students a year. And we have a relatively small team of staff, so we, we do get to know each other 
fairly well. So you will have the personal tutor meetings. They'll be scheduled um, at least once a term and you can have more if you need them. Any, any time request, uh, your personal tutor will be there to, to help you and guide you. Um, so within the staff, we have the head of school, we have senior tutor, we have three specialty dentists, eight hygienists and therapists, um, and a wonderful administration team. So we are a nice sort of close group of people to look after, after you while you're studying with us. Um, they sort of the, the floors, um, and I think there are stairs involved. There is a lift which I use, um, but you, you'll love the stairs. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening to me today. Um, I hope I haven't said too many ums, because when I'm talking to nobody, I think it's a word I keep saying, so I do apologise um, when I haven't got a, an audience in front of me that I can see. So I do apologise. Um, but thank you very much for joining me today. If you have any questions that after you've managed to ask them today, if there's anything you want to ask um, through, through Tom and myself, um, and you go away and you think, oh, I should have asked them that, or why didn't I think of that? The email contact uh, is there, and we are accessing that um, at the moment, even when we're working remotely. So do feel free to um, email in and ask us any questions that you've forgotten to us today. Thank you very much. <laughs>